Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Woolly Thistle Shopcast. I'm your host Corrine. I own and operate the Woolly Thistle and with me back in the Shopcast today is Maggie who was out sick last time. Welcome back Maggie. Thank you. And Feeling uh, much better. Yes, you came back all very chipper and bright and I happy. will say too, thank you for all the well wishes. I saw quite a few comments yeah. wishing me well. I yeah. had a couple DMs wishing me well, which was <laughs> really, really sweet. Yeah, yeah. You were out so. with the, the dreaded COVID, but it wasn't... <laughs> I was, it was. It, it wasn't, wasn't as bad. I, I think, I don't know if it's because I was newly boosted or just uh, fortunate. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it, it wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. And you managed to not get anyone here infected yes fabulous yes yes, yes. the Thank minute uh, my husband brought it home and the minute i got exposed and we knew that he wasn't feeling well i masked up yeah and, uh, i think it makes a huge difference i think it does it, it helps too that mostly i'm in this office by myself <laughs> <laughs> that's right isolating um, away yeah 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 well glad to have you back yes glad to be back. Uh, we just had black friday this weekend it's monday after black friday thank you everybody who showed up for the selection boxes which was probably a good week ago now yeah and then black friday which was this weekend thank you thank you it's really lovely to see you all come and shop at the Woolly Thistle. We really appreciate it. And um, it's Cyber Monday and things are still going today. Mm -hmm. But we are here recording a shopcast for you. And um, we're looking ahead to what else is coming and what we've got and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And you'll be watching this on a Friday and there are quite a few yes. good things going in the shop today around noon. So yeah. stay tuned. Yes. You don't want to miss those. Exactly. Exactly. So why don't we talk about what we're wearing? Yeah, that's a good and idea. Actually, I think we're both wearing the same yarn today. Are you wearing Old Centrum? Old Centrum 3-ply. 3 3-ply? Three yeah. You didn't plan this, so I might look how different they are at different gauges yeah. and all that. So so, uh, so I'm wearing the Humulus by Isabel Kramer. My sister actually knit this for best me Best sister last ever. Year. Uh, she is the best sister ever. Yeah. Of course, um, you're knitworthy too, and so that makes... I am highly yeah. knitworthy. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's... And I've actually been wearing this a lot. It's a good relaxed fit. She got the fit just perfect. Yeah. She has one herself that she'd knit. I don't remember what she used for herself. Well, what's the color contrast? Is that also... So the color contrast is actually... So the, the three-ply is a worsted Weight. and the contrast that she used I think is actually a fingering weight Noro sock yarn that she had in her stash I love I can that. remember um she sent me a photo and she's like what do you like better and she had two different colorways that she'd swatched with and I was like oh the the red I'm like, yeah you should do that one I didn't know she was knitting it for me oh, um, oh, so oh, she's sneaky um <laughs> and then yeah next thing I knew I had a sweater which is amazing lovely um so yeah even though they're not the same weights um it works, it works really, really well, well yeah it's pretty subtle down here but I like it yeah and it's so cozy yeah and it looks really good it's not pilly no it's it's and I've been I've been wearing I've worn it a lot even under the arms yeah. where you would expect some yeah. pilling yeah. there's minor pilling yeah, and I too am wearing the three ply. So yeah. this is the worsted weight three ply. And oh, I forget what this pattern is called. We'll put it there. But this is um, a lovely cable and lace design. Beautiful. And it's knit in pieces, you know, the front and then the back. And then you join them together, make the sleeve holes and... Is it a Marie Wallen? Design? No, 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 no. I'm. There's... I've forgotten all the details. We'll put them okay. there. But I would have knit this in the round. I don't see any point why... We had to knit it in pieces, although with it being cables, I don't mind knitting flat because yeah. you're doing work, whether you're in the round or knitting back and forth. Maybe it was to give it more structure. Um, mm -hmm. I often hear that about seams. But yeah, this is lovely and soft and warm. I think it's knit at a looser gauge than yours is. Um, yeah. yeah, I think so. And it's one that I wear quite a lot. And then, of course, I'm wearing fennel garn around my neck. This is fennel garn from Rama, and it's my tapestry cowl um, design, and that is available as a pattern for sale, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can buy the two-color um, pattern by itself, and yeah. then we have kits for the original. Yeah, but I think they're out of stock right now, so we need to get some more back in, but anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. I'm feeling cozy. It was snowy slushy out this morning. It was. I wasn't expecting it. No, either. me neither. So I was like, oh. I know I happened to get up in the middle of the night and look out and ugh, I was like oh here we go and it was just it was just enough to be a nuisance you know I had to um, shovel out and I stuff. I don't get excited when it snows. Well aren't you special? 
I don't. I do and I don't. I mean, I like I like it before Christmas. I'd prefer it if it was the late fluffy snow and that yeah. heavy wet stuff. It's heavy, and stuff. wet, and <laughs> yeah, so hard to move and stuff. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah. I don't, I'm not that much of a curmudgeon, I don't think. But it's just the work involved. Whenever I, I start garage. to feel really like, oh, about it, um, I remember that I lived in Florida for a decade. <laughs> and this and is it was better. so, so, so hot. <laughs> not, no shame to anyone no, living I mean, in Florida. And I, some people absolutely love it. Um, yeah. I think my in-laws live there, absolutely love it. It's yeah. the perfect climate for them. Yeah. Anything that is below like 50 degrees, they hate. <laughs> Um, they get really and there, there, like, there's many reasons that they genuinely love it, and um, I like visiting. I think since becoming a knitter, like a hardcore knitter, I right. really do embrace winter a lot more than I yeah. ever have before. Um, but I can see it's it's hard. It's hard going. It's definitely gray. I've got more twinkle lights at home. I've been lighting more candles. I put my tree up yesterday. Nice. I haven't decorated it yet. The kids will help me with that. But um, yeah, the tree is up. It's all nice. zhuzhed and lit and everything. We're picking up a real tree. Oh, good for you. So, yeah. I didn't do that yesterday. Maybe next weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like we're so early for everything right now. Yeah. Although, like, in, in my family growing up, we always decorated um, after Thanksgiving. Yeah. It was that weekend. Okay. And I don't know if it was just because my parents were off. My sister still does Probably. That. Usually yeah. that because you've got the, a little bit of time off. My daughter's birthday is December 14th, and we used to do it right after her birthday, so her birthday okay. was not Christmas kind of thing. But that went by the by, and now she says it's Christmas as of November 1st, and we have Christmas music mm. playing and all that kind of stuff. But That's too early. We have so many November birthdays at our house. Uh -huh. um, we had uh, my youngest turned 14 Aww. on Thanksgiving. Oh! congratulations so she had a lovely turkey oh, birthday really? um yeah she had a great time um, <laughs> with all her family I mean, with all her family that's, yeah that i mean very you get, you get a whole, of you because she's a little extrovert just like you so that would be you know ready-made birthday yeah. party yep mm. yeah she loved it that's that lovely good. happy birthday irene um yeah so how was thanksgiving because we just it was wonderful so yeah. we drove down to um portsmouth which is about an hour and a half hour and 45 from here um and uh, my sister-in-law and her husband did all the cooking um he loves to cook and he's a fabulous cook so um he just took the reins all i had to do was bring a pie and some dinner rolls um, <laughs> love that and it was great and we just hung out all day yeah i uh, played a little cribbage and, yeah um which is chaotic with eight people <laughs> but um That's yeah it was it was a lot of fun yeah it was a wonderful relaxing day and fantastic yeah I cooked everything. Um, I've never cooked Thanksgiving dinner myself because my ex always would do yeah. the cooking. So I did it. It was fabulous. Great. The turkey was too big, but that's okay. Um, that's what I could get. And then it filled the whole oven. And then I realized that I couldn't do my sides. So yeah. uh, we had to, you know, stagger that. But it was great. And um, it came out really well. And we've been eating turkey ever since. And mm -hmm. there'll be turkey pie and all that kinds of stuff. So, yeah. No, it was really nice. Uh, the kids were chill. Great. And it was lovely. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And you've extended your family. I have. I haven't mentioned this. I have a kitty cat that, that came to live with us. Um, I was ready. I was ready to commit. Yeah. So then I went to the shelter thinking, you know, I'm looking for kittens and they had a room full of kittens and they were really, really cute. And the room was all glass. Um, so you could, the cats can see out and all that. And as I was petting this little kitty who couldn't care less about me, I looked out through the glass down the hall and there was another glass room and there was this single cat on her own. And she just looked right at me and went, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I want to see that cat. So then I got the whole story that she was locked in her room by herself because she bites and, you know, there's a rabies scare and I'm like, oh, just let me in. She, she's talking <laughs> to me. So I went in and sure enough, she jumps right up in my lap. She's 10 years old. She's got a few um, attitude problems is what they, they said. And she was on gabapentin to keep her chill because she, um, I think she was fairly stressed out and she'd been there for six months. And that was her third time back at the shelter. And I'm like, and she looked me right in the face and she's like, take me home. And I'm like, I'm going to take you home. And she is the cutest, happiest little kitty cat. Well, I saw her photo on Instagram. So if you want to see what she yeah. looks like. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's, she's got a bit of a thing going on in that picture. But she's just lovely. She climbs up and then she just looks me in the face. And 
um, yeah, I'm in love. She's lovely. Her name is Kitty. <laughs> Kitty the <laughs> third. Her real name is uh, Myrtle, which I just can't. That's a very American pronunciation of that word. And the Scottish way would be Mer Myrtle. And I can't be doing with that. So we're going with Kitty. And she's my third kitty cat. So yeah. Our, our rescues are Garfield and Sox. And the first, the first like six months of saying Garfield, I'm just like, this is too weird. Yeah. Um, but it's his name. It's his name. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's how my dog ended up being Buddy was I was waiting to name him. And in the meantime, come on, little buddy. Yeah. And that was it. That's what stuck. So, but yeah, I, I just default to Kitty. Um, I remember my grandmother. Oh my gosh, when she was in her 80s, she had a cat and she called it Cat. And she would just like pat it like this really <laughs> aggressively and the cat would be like all up in her hand. And, oh, Cat, 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 Cat. And I'm like, oh God, is that me? <laughs> am, I, am I calling my kitty Cat half the time? Probably. <laughs> but she's lovely. And yes, yeah, so I'll put a picture there as well. There's one, yeah. there's a nice one of her sunbathing I'll put there. And she's lovely. She hasn't bitten anyone. She runs away whenever she hears uh, my son stomps through the house, <laughs> but half the time he's not there, so that's fine. And she gets on with Maya, my, uh, my daughter. So yeah, no, she's very, she's Sweet. not a threat. No, she, I'm not allowed to have any other pets or children in the house. You know, like young kids, but right. I think I think she'll just hide away. She's indoors. She's not allowed out. She's not trying to get out. I've never had a fully indoor cat before, so. Yeah, we're learning, but she's great. She's great company. She gets all in the way when I'm trying to knit or do work on the computer. But that's that's why I got her was to sort of stop me and slow me down a bit. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so what else? <clears throat> um, I don't know if we want, so today today's episode. Wow, we are 15 minutes in already. <laughs> um, today's episode, we will also have segments from Caitlin. Um, and Rachel on Fair Isle. Yes. Um, so stay tuned for that. Yes. So, um, are you knitting on anything right now? Do you have any FOs? I, I have a couple FOs. All right. Let's see your FOs. Um, so the big FO is right, right here. <gasps> it does fit. For anybody wondering, um, it does fit. Uh, it's my tessellated vest. I used, um, Jameson and Smith color 202 with some hand spun and some woolly mammoth um, cream color, which is hard to see in this lighting. I, I did notice in dimmer lighting, it, the white pops. pops more. I think you should just take this off a little bit and show them up close because it's hard to Ooh. see. Oh, don't she's, break, don't break the bouncer. It fits perfectly, which is a lovely. It's so pretty. Um, it's so pretty. And, and I gotta show you the inside as knitters do um because i really oh. like the inside you yeah. can see the striping yeah of the the uh, colors you see more, more of your hand spun you see more of the colors yeah yeah so, there's something about the i just love the striping lovely um but i'm i'm finding i think i'm going to gift it to my sister um <laughs> pourquoi because i'm not a beige gal and one might wonder why i cast on that's a exactly what i just vest. thought I know, I know. Because you, you loved, you loved it. I loved knitting, knitting it. it. I yeah. love the colors together. You know, I think maybe I was just supposed to knit it and give it to my sister, who <laughs> loves beige, looks amazing She has a beige, beige queen. Yeah. She just, like, beige is her favorite color, which I sort of tease her. She also likes gold, which I call fancy beige. Um, <laughs> So I think that she'll really love this and that she'll wear the heck out of it. Yeah. Um, it just, I wore it last week. It fits really well. It just wasn't lighting me up. Yeah. Um, literally. Like literally. I felt <laughs> like I had to put all the other colors around me and. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think so, it's beautiful. Whereas I think she'll wear it with enthusiasm. Lucky so. sister. Yes. Yeah. So maybe uh, Marie, you can send us an FO picture of, of you wearing it. Yeah, when that you get would be it. amazing. So this is, she knows she's getting it? Yeah, I told her. I'm like, I think I'm sending you a vest. This is she, so, she like, I'm Ooh. like, it's so beige. And she's just laughing at me. <laughs> well, so. let that be a lesson. So so this is one of my FOs. I have a I'll few. I'll know to stop you. A few. Yeah. I'll know to stop you in future when you cast on a yeah. whole sweater and beige. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing about this too, um, because I had been thinking of knitting a cockatoo braid with, because I knit this from a cone, yeah. and I'd been thinking, oh, I'll knit a cockatoo braid. No, I'm not. Oh, you've got um, a whole cone of two or two. Yeah, so, I but I have, to add, I have plans for the other part of the cone, so I'm it's not, not worried about it. It's, I never thought of it as beige, but it is beige, but it's not a flat beige. There's sort of, you know, there's that heathering. Of right, it. there is heathering in it, mm -hmm. and I think too, from from my personal color tone, it's a more a little more yellowy mm -hmm. than. I usually like to wear yeah so yeah well it's, it's beautiful it's, it's beautiful I'm really happy with it did um, you like I the knitting of it. it with the the um, um, color work yeah <laughs> after you... a while it gets a little tedious 
Um, Could you have just have done it as stranded? Because it's mosaic, right? It is mosaic. I'm, you know, I've been tempted to do a swatch and see. So I think that if you knit it stranded, it would change things. Because knitting it mosaic, <clears throat> you would do like the two, uh, I'm going to call them blippy rows, the two color work rows. Um, and then you would have a single color row of just that main color. Uh -huh. So between the two color work rows, you only have one knitted row that's kind of elongated. Whereas right. if you were doing it, you'd in, have to do two rows. You'd have to do two rows. Yeah. So I think it would change the look of it. Yeah. <clears throat> but right. and I don't mind mosaic knitting. Part of it is because it was three colors, which is hard to tell on mine. Yeah. But then things kind of get tangled, and that was yes. obnoxious after a while. Yes. I've but, never done one. It's quite heavy, isn't it? Because there's a lot of yeah, yarn in it. There's, yeah, there's quite a bit in yeah. there. There were so many of these at Rhinebeck's too. And I love the vest. I yeah. love vests. I love the vest. I like how, like the pattern was great. Um, A little tip for anyone doing this. So I was really pleased with how my yeah. uh, ribbing came out. Yeah. Um, I have more stitches than what the pattern calls for. So I don't know if I had just had more rows. But I went with the standard, like, two stitches for every three. Okay. Just picking up that way, and it worked out perfectly. Yeah, it looks really nice. So Well done. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, so that's done. Okay, shall we dress her again? Yeah. And um, what else do you have? I have finished socks. Ooh. So I finished the Vichy Vu shorty socks. I think I had one and a little bit. This is blocked now. Oh. I haven't worn them yet. So um, soft. But they are. They're really soft. There is nylon in these. I think they're an 80-20. Ooh. I think I wrote down the color I can't remember. There. I think this is Warm Sunset. Such a, an US zero? Or? I used ones. Okay. I must always Teeny, use ones stitches. and a 64 stitch sock. Lovely jubbly. So this is, no, this is... Biche Bouche Le Biche Sock. Biche Le Sock. Which we do have some in stock. I we think. do have some in stock. Yeah. Very nice. I have a sock on the go. Great. And I showed it to folks... Last time, I have been often knitting other oh, things. I saw this. Yeah, so um, I just need to cast it off, really. <laughs> My funny little. Um, so I did a whatever these short heels are called, and I forgot a stitch, so I have to just you know sew it in. But so just a short row heel. Short row heel, which I don't do a whole lot of because I tend to do a heel uh, thing turn. Uh, gusset. Thank you, gusset. <laughs> He'll and then, and guess it. That's the one. Yeah. So this was um, kind of fun and different. This side came out okay. This side, I forgot a stitch. So I'll just Oops. tack it down. I uh, wasn't going to go back and redo right, everything. No. And then, um, oh, right. So, yeah. <laughs> you did see this last time. I've got these. Well, all right. You're going to have to believe me. I've got these little <laughs> um, flowers that kind of look to me like thistles. So pretty. It is pretty. Yeah, so anyway, um, I'm knitting this with our uh, Rambler yarn. It's really nice to knit with. And I've got a cast on second sock and get on with that, but I have been knitting on other things nice. that I'm not going to show you today. Yeah, so I there have you like go. Project ADD right now. Oh, so, yeah. It is what it is. Oh, the, yeah. um, now that the vest is done, I'm in full gift knitting mode. Right, so, so you are doing a lot of gift knitting? or? Um, I don't know about a lot. Some? Um, my son I'm doing wants none. socks. So I did finish. I haven't finished any hand spun <gasps> in a while. It's still damp, oh. but I had to bring it in. What is this? This is actually Icelandic wool. Oh, my Which is gosh. crazy because it's so soft. This um, is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's, re it's really nice. Um, I don't remember the name of the... Caitlin will actually remember. I could ask her. Um, oh I picked up the fiber at Rhinebeck last year, not this year. And before I started spinning what I got this year, I wanted to finish well, um, spinning. So how many skins did you want to get? Did you buy a fleece? So, so this is it. I didn't buy a fleece. It was prepped, um, prepped roving. <gasps> um, so you could tell it's still a little damp. Oh, God, um, it's beautiful. Your, your spinning is just beautiful. So I really, I felt in the mood to spin long draw. And so this was in the stash. It's a nice chunky. It's so soft. It is so soft. So so they must have prepped it by taking all those guard hairs out. There were some in there, but not a lot. Not as much yeah. as as I yeah. would as I would have expect. expected. And the little bit of Icelandic fleece that I've ever prepped, yeah, was very sort of hairy. They yeah, got that. I forget if it's the tog or the fell that's the hair. Exactly. Bit, but, one of other. Um, one of it. And this one, it feels very like you can just feel oh. the, the undercoating. It's, it's like, beautiful. Really soft. So. Yeah. 
Beautiful. I don't know. Yet. Beautiful. What are you going to make? I don't know. Mm. Maybe a cowl because it's so mm -hmm. soft. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just crazy. So this is sort of an FO. How many uh, plies? Two? It's just a two ply, yeah. Um, I so wonder, wanted it light and fluffy. I wonder why um, Lopi, Let Lopi and all those are single plies, why they go with that. I don't know. I mean, they obviously have figured it out and there, there's a reason for yeah. it. Yeah, and it's quite durable the way that it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. So. But Beautiful. Yeah, oh my fly. gosh, that might disappear. <laughs> <laughs> um and then um and then socks for for sam um did you show your bag last time i did show so i'm using my gnome bag that i got <laughs> at woolen folk um i don't remember the name so of sweet the bag owner but i love it um and so i just used i went stash driving this is some old patents uh croy yarn man socks man socks so i'm doing the 72 inch heel flap and gusset yeah. I love that he has a preference for a heel flap and gusset. <laughs> it's so noteworthy. Um, so, that matches your sweater, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was home this weekend, so I had him try it on. Was it good having them home? Um, it the was whole, really good. Whole fam Danley? Yes, everybody was home. Good. And everybody's gone now. Yeah. Back to school. Equally but... good, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be back soon. That's, that's what I'm learning as they go, and I'm like, oh, they're gone. But they'll be back like, oh, before you know it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. it's true. It's true. So, yeah, well, so good. that's like all my knitting. Yeah, I have. That I can show. Yes, I haven't done much on my cardigan. It seems to have stalled, but that's okay. I'll figure it out. Um, I, I I don't usually let um, whips languish too long. I just need to come back, circle around, and are do you, something else. Are you? Is it sitting because of like decisions or color? I or? just I just bound off. I did a three needle <laughs> bind off. Yes, and I I need to pick up the stitches and start knitting the sleeves. Oh. That's where I'm at. And I just, I haven't, I don't know. It's been sitting there quietly, not calling my name. Hmm. Mm. And, you know, the socks. And then uh, a little bit of designy stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just going with the flow. And yeah. I'll come back. Yeah, for sure. I actually think I'm going to wear the heck out of this thing. I think it'll be very wearable. Mm -hmm. Strangely, for all the colors, I think it will be actually uh, a favorite cardigan. So. Yeah, that's my hope. It's beautiful. Thank you. I'm I'll have it to see it done. I'll have it done in time for May, June, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> right when it warms up. Yeah, exactly. All right, what are we talking about today? Or should um, we I announce think, a winner? Yes, I was going to say, let's pick a winner. So um, every shop cast, we pick two winners um, for a $25 gift card to the Woolly Thistle. Yay! And our first winner today is at cglick one and they say, gosh, I just want to knit it all. I have severe cast on itis right now. Uh -huh. um, I'm trying to control it, but this podcast didn't help that. You're well, welcome. We're sorry. <laughs> Not really. Um, so, see, Glick01, you've won a $25 gift card to the Woolly Thistle. If you can email us at info at thewoollythistle.com, put prize winner in all caps, and we will quickly get you your $25 That's gift card. That's right. Congratulations. And if you want to win a $25 gift card, all you need to do is leave a comment below, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I think I said that perfectly backwards. <laughs> and uh, and you too shall be in the running. And we just love you to leave a comment. Uh, we don't have any prompts for what to talk about. Yeah. Um, sometimes we do, but not often. So yeah, just leave us a comment and subscribe and you will be in the running. We pick them, we pick winners randomly. And like Maggie said, we do two an episode if we remember. Yeah. Yeah. Which will we've picked two. It's just a matter of if we of announcing to yes, announce. That's right. Um, yeah. So, so should we go visit Caitlin? Maybe we are very on the same page oh, this that morning. Never happens. Yes. Um, uh, Caitlin is recording as we're recording, so um, it'll sure be sure that whatever she's going to have yes. is going to be delightful. Yes. So we'll see you on the other side. Hi, everybody. It's Caitlin. I'm happy to be back on this week's Shopcast again and have a couple of things to share with you. Unfortunately, it's two projects that have gone wrong. <laughs> Not quite as planned and what I am thinking about doing about it. So uh, first I'll tell you what I'm wearing, which did go well. <laughs> this is uh, one of Corrine's vanilla sweaters. Uh, it's her her most popular pattern and knit in realm of fennel garden this is my version which i tweaked a little bit obviously with some stripes um it's a i think four row maybe three row three row stripes but on the lowest row of each stripe i did a knit three in one color and then knit one in the background color to make a little color work 
uh, sort of thing. I also did the pearl bump of the contrast color at the neck. This uh, is Rama Finnegarn in colors 4136, kind of a sagey heathered green, and 4121, which is the rusty copper color. Uh, I think it's maybe about time that I knit another vanilla sweater. <laughs> I'm thinking um, like a full long sleeve one, maybe the fluff. Uh, seems like um, I'm about due for another. It's just such a nice wearable weight. Um, so let's talk about the things that I've been knitting lately that unfortunately haven't gone very well. Um, I do have a little update. Uh, again, not something that's gone wrong, but my tea pullover that I've been working on I don't have much more to show except that the second half is still growing. I've talked about that one on the last couple of shop casts I've been on and uh, it's knit in Tuku Wool DK, the original yarn. It's a Hohi Locatelli pattern. Hopefully I'll have that all finished for you next time. I'm I'm going back and forth on this, um, this I-cord seam that you do down the middle. You have to make a huge long I-cord. And um, I've seen this new gadget in a couple of places um, to create an I-cord. It's like a three-pronged latch hook uh, with like a 3D printed handle. And it's uh, like a really quick way to make an I-cord. Uh, so I'm kind of like waiting on finishing that project until I decide if I want to get this sort of a shortcut tool or if I just want to do a regular I-cord on um, some small needles. So. I'll, I'll let you know how that goes. Um, so I was working on the tea pullover and then what happened was I had a trip planned and sometimes it's really fun to have sort of a knit project memory tied to um, an, a special event. Uh, sometimes that happens accidentally where you're knitting on a project and something happens and so those things are kind of forever linked in your memory. Uh, that's sort of special when that happens. Um, so what I was trying to create that. I didn't want to just be finishing the second sleeve on my tea pullover. I wanted to have a new special project when I had a trip coming up. Um, yeah, so so I sort of hurriedly in the midst of, um, you know, getting ready for our trip and all the logistics of that, uh, I pulled out a project that I'd been excited to start for a while and started swatching and then just kind of like thought I might have had my swatch together pretty well. So I chucked it all in my bag and then planned to cast on on the plane. You can tell that that probably didn't end up going so well for me. The whole hurried, <laughs> um, you know, checking things in and all that. So I'm, I'm here today to show you how that's gone and talk through what I'm thinking next. So my plan was to use some um, yarns that I got at Ryan Beck a couple years ago. This is actually some fiber from Melanated Boho Bay that I spun this summer. I don't know what the fiber content is actually. I think it may be superwash with some other shiny things um, like sea cell or bamboo or something. I really love how this yarn turned out. Um, these colors are just totally my favorite right now. Uh, and then this yarn I had also gotten at Rhinebeck a couple years ago. It's from Batten Kill Fiber Mill. They they mill our Rambler for us. Um, this is their Adirondack DK, which I think is the same base as the Romney Merino from Oysters and Pearls. I think they dye onto this. Uh, we've carried the Oysters and Pearls in the shop before. So, uh, yep. I have several skeins of this, so this is going to be the main color, this is going to be a colorwork yoke, and the pattern that I chose is the cotton grass pullover by the Petite Knitter. Um, so like I said, I kind of hurriedly swatched, you know, like an inch worth, <laughs> uh, you know, the four inch square, and I only got about an inch's worth when it looked like my gauge was hopefully close enough once I blocked it and stretched it but it was looking a little on the tight side. I also totally didn't know what weight this is because hand spun sort of has that uh, tendency to um, be hard to pin down what the gauge or what the, what the weight of the yarn is. Um, but I decided to just go for it. I didn't have any more time to think about needles. I didn't pack my entire set of interchangeables because I 
wasn't checking a bag and I was a little nervous about having my needles confiscated on the on the flight um, so I just threw in the needle that I thought I was gonna need and then um, hopped on the plane <laughs> Turns out that the pattern starts with a tubular cast on, which I didn't have the directions for on the plane. So I just kept swatching on the plane anyway, because um, I, I didn't know exactly how to start the tubular cast on. So this whole project is just not off to a great start. Um, but then on the trip, I, I was able to start the sweater. I had a lovely time knitting. Um, it's, it's looking really good. I was still nervous about my gauge but um just kind of kept knitting because that was the only project i had and i had some downtime so this is what i have ended up with so far <clears throat> i've just finished the color work yoke now I've, I've been back from the trip for a little while and still just kind of going straight ahead with it um i think it's looking really pretty so far um so yeah uh, the self-striping of the hand spun is pretty fun. I knew that it would be a little bit of low contrast um, in this little tree sort of motif. It gets a little lost because the background color is quite this similar color, but I still love how, how the color work has turned out. Um, so what I've done now that I'm home and have my barber cords and things, finish the yoke, is I've put the yoke on barber cords and I've steamed it to kind of relax the fiber out a little. I'm a f <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed to tell you, I think my gauge is 22 stitches on this yoke and it's meant to be 18 <laughs> over four inches. I think it's, it's kind of hard to measure the gauge in something that kind of rounds out because uh, it's not flat and straight. Um, so let me put it on for you a second and show you what it's looking like. And maybe you can give me some feedback on whether you think it's close enough or um, I should start over. <laughs> All right, here we are with the sweater on. It doesn't not fit, <laughs> but I'm a little worried about the arm movement. Um, I think it's a little bit too conical and not... Uh, gonna allow for as much movement as I want. I'm gonna be finicking with it all the time, fiddling with it. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a tough call. I I think it is going to be a little bit too tight at the shoulders. It's um, just for like moving my arms up and down. I'm afraid the whole thing's gonna move. It's really a shame because it's it's looking good otherwise. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of stuck at what to do next. <laughs> so this is, I think, going to go in timeout for a little while. Uh, feel free to tell me what you think in the comments. Does it look like, you know, a sweater that you've made that has about this angle to the sleeves and it still fits okay? Or is it going to restrict my movement too much and I'm going to want to knit um, at a looser gauge? I think what I should have done is gone up at least a needle size for the color work. I'm kind of at the edge of what I like the look of the gauge to be. Um, I think my hand spun is a bit on the finer side to pull this off at this gauge. 18 stitches is um, almost like a worsted gauge. Uh, and I think my, my hand spun is a bit finer than that. So I don't know if, if I pull it out and start over again, trying to get better gauge, if I, <laughs> move on and try to do something different with these yarns. If I keep it and blaze ahead and then see how it fits, I'm, I'm really not quite decided yet. So I'll, um, I'll keep you posted. I think the extra complication with making this decision is that I did intend for this to be sort of a souvenir, happy trip memory sweater and to undo all of this knitting just feels kind of sad. <laughs> So, um, yeah, feel, feel free to, to chime in about, um, yeah, your, your, um, expertise in this area and, and also share some of your, um, like souvenir knits and what you've, um, kind of knit your memories into. I'd love to hear about that. I think that's a, a cool topic. 
So um, I think that's all to say about the cotton grass sweater for right now. Uh, and I'll, I'll keep you posted on how that goes. Um, the other project that I wanted to share with you that I'm kind of thinking of tweaking to make more usable is something that I made for the color work accessories knit along maybe two years ago now. That is uh, this cowl that I designed sort of on my own. It's a pattern from the Selbu Patterns book. I knit it in Jameson and Smith. Um, two ply jumper weight. I think maybe the cream was Shetland Supreme, if I remember right. But I, I, I knitted it into this sort of a tube of a cowl with some um, fingering weight and mohair on the inside for some softness. And I have not worn this <laughs> since I made it maybe two years ago. Last winter wasn't very cold, so that might be part of it. But also it's just not as wearable of a shape as I hoped. It will keep me very warm if I'm bundled up for a long time. Uh, if I were like on a ski hill or something for the day, but it's just not a shape that I easily throw on and off for my daily life. And so I'm not really wearing it. Uh, I actually prefer, I've just, I'm, I'm kind of narrowing down my preferences on things so that I can um, more, uh, I guess, create projects that I know are going to fit into my life a little bit better. Uh, I, I prefer a longer loop cowl that you can wrap around twice. Um, I just love the feel of that. And that's the one I have like one cowl. That's my favorite that I just go to every year. So, um, what I'm thinking about doing with this one instead is sticking it and turning it into a cushion. Uh, I think what I could do is basically cut up my seam here or my like joint my uh beginning of round cut through both layers and then i could lay the entire thing out flat most of it will still be connected and i'll have sort of a front of the cushion and then a back of the cushion and then i can just kind of lay it out flat and stuff it and then re-sew the thing i had just steeked uh, i think this would make i'm, I'm kind of in um holiday decorating mode at our house uh, now that Thanksgiving has passed and I'm thinking that this would make a really lovely uh, cushion for on the couch during the winter time. So trying to salvage another project that I've realized I'm not um, wearing as it is because it didn't turn out quite as usable and wearable as I'd like. So I will also keep you posted on this and uh, let you know how the steaking and re-sewing goes. I do have a sewing machine so I'll probably just Kind of make a seam. I'm thinking about maybe picking up stitches along the edges and doing sort of an I cord, um, almost like a piping sort of effect on the on the edges. I have to see if I have a yarn that would still look nice with this. So anyway, I'll um, let you know how that goes and look forward to seeing you again next month with some more crafting updates. Enjoy the rest of the Shopcast. We'll see you next time. Bye! Well, I enjoyed that in my future self. How about you? I am looking forward to watching. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin, for getting that into us and letting us all enjoy what you're up to um, in your segment. So yeah. what's next, Maggie? Um, what's next? So we have a few. Um, we're going to show you what's coming to the shop uh, later today. We have yes. a few yes. really, really good things. Yes. Um, everything is good everything is but good. you did say really really good so yeah. yes what what do we want to talk about first um so i think you showed them last time last last time, last time. i can't talk <laughs> um the yes. earth sock set yeah so that's going live today at okay. 12. i'll scooch you get them gorgeous so yeah. these are we woolly mammoth and these are her heart socks. I'm clearly just ooing and aahing. I know. I'm letting you talk about them. They need them. no introduction whatsoever. And so Emma is in Northern Ireland and she sources her own wool from local farmers. And she does a lot of natural dyeing. So her sock sets have um, cute little um, matching but naturally dyed heels and toes mm -hmm. quantities. And... This is the natural color, the big skin. And then yeah. you just top it off with your little. So this one I think is copper. Yes. 
And I, um, I the the hearth sock is fifty percent Jacob, fifty percent BFL. Mm -hmm. So a nice sock yarn. Mm -hmm. And last time we had these, they sold out very quickly, and we worked with Emma to get a little bit of a bigger order so yeah. that everyone who wants it can get it. Yeah, and this one is the mustard. Beautiful contrast, so good. That's wildflower. There may be a couple of different. This one is it's a sprout. Oh, this is wildflower. Yeah, I like this one. I like them all. I like them all. So these two are both wildflower, but you can see this one is a deeper and this one's more on the gray. So uh, look out for that. Make sure you're not just getting wildflower, but you're selecting the color that you want. Yeah, they're both of... beautiful, but they will be listed in the shop Separately. as separate variants. So you can pick the one yeah. that you want. Yeah. And you'll know exactly what you're getting. Um, this one's light bracken. Bracken. Beautiful. Reminds me of home. Um, did we do this one? I don't think we did. This is cognac. I like that very much. Um, this one is a very subtle. This one's moss. Hugely subtle. Almost mm -hmm. the same color, but a little bit of yellow in it. So just be aware of that. Yeah. But still beautiful. Um, and then we have to let you, because it's pink. Peony sock set. There we go. <clears throat> so that's sort of a lovely mauve color. Yum. Love that. Yeah, really, really nice. So these are going on sale today at 12, Yeah, which will be just lovely. And if you don't knit socks, you could still knit. Um, Ooh, this yarn would be yeah. beautiful for lots of things. Uh, mitts, a hat. Mittens, yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. It's really gorgeous. So for even sure. if you're not a sock knitter, yeah. it is yeah. perfect for socks, uh, all natural socks. Yeah, but, no, it's not working. Okay. But, <laughs> but not just for socks. So. Not just for socks. Very soft to the touch, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. 100% uh, wool, so no nylon or anything like that, mm -hmm. which is great. So that's yeah. going at 12 o'clock today. That's going 12 o'clock today. Um, also, we're launching today, not specifically at noon, is Susan Crawford's book, Echoes. Mm -hmm. um, this book looks fantastic. As we haven't soon got as, it yet. Yeah, when it arrives, we'll show you a flip through next time. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this one. But we've been looking at it online, <clears throat> and it does look really, really nice. It really so does. many good books this season. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. It's been a really good year for books. Yeah, it has. It's yeah. been amazing. Um, uh, Softly by Sari Norland is delayed. So yes. if you ordered that, I'm sorry, we haven't got it yet. Well, at least at time of recording, we haven't got that yet. So we'll keep you up to date with that. Um, but I can't wait for that oh, one to come in. Oh, we could show this one. Um, yarn issue four arrived. Yes. Let me do this. So this is from Scotland. <clears throat> so it's the Journal of Scottish Yarns, which is very, very exciting. This is their fourth issue. And they do things um, like weaving. And this is prickly thistle, twill with a twist. So they do a lot of weaving, a lot of different um, textiles, lots of knitting, of course, and crochet, no doubt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's usually a fair amount of crochet in, in yeah. this, so if you're primarily a crocheter, there you go. Um, yep, and lots of different uh, yarns, all from around Scotland. Lots of history. Yeah. Love stuff like this. It's a great publication, and it smells so good. Mm -hmm. <sighs> who knew that I was such a nose? I am definitely <laughs> <laughs> anyone who's been watching for a while. <laughs> I know. We'll know this. I'm just figuring it out myself. Kilt makers, this is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, so this so is the these awesome are in the shop now. So let's tuck that in there. Ooh, that slipped out. Pretty. Little postcard comes with your mm -hmm. purchase. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've also added to our needles. Um, we get lots of questions about the Chowgu shorties. Mm. Um, and we do have the full sets of shorties um, available in zero to three four to eight, and then nine through 12. Um, but for some of you who've been interested in just trying a single set, we've also brought in these. And a single set comes with quite a bit. It comes with the two inch and the three inch tips and two cords. So between these two and three inch tips and the cords, you can actually come up with quite a few sizes of needles. Um, so for the uninitiated, what would you use these little needles to knit? Oh. So much. Uh, not just sleeves. Uh, you could certainly, I, I use my shorties for sleeves all the time and they just make sleeves fly. Mm. Um, especially like with the three inch tips, um, it's it's great for when you first cast on if you're doing 
um, you know, like top down sleeves. Yeah. Um, but you can also use the two inch tips and the smaller, and then you slowly increase the size um, as you increase up the sleeve. Um, you can also use it for hats, any small circumference hats, baby sweaters, um, just smaller knits, mittens. Wear, mittens. So anything that you're going around a small circumference and you don't want a magic loop. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what are these? I, I find magic loops uh, after a while drives me crazy. I can magic loop. It's perfectly fine. And sometimes I do because I don't have the right needle size. But now with shorties, more often than not, I'm grabbing these. So we, we <clears> do <throat> sell a lot of the sets for these. But yeah. like you were saying, we do get questions about, well, I want to try it before I commit to a full set. Yeah. So now, now we can. have sizes. I think we have one through eight um, where you can just get a single set. And it does, it, they all come with, you can see the two inch, the three inch tips, and then two cords. Um, so between that, you can make quite a few. Yeah. Um, and there's a little chart on the back for you that'll show you the different lengths that you can make. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so these handy. are in the shop now, I believe? Yeah. Great. And if you're a big fan of shorties and you find that your sixes are always missing or something like that, you can get an extra set. Right. Yes. So, always okay. losing things out of my set. Yeah. yeah. Or sometimes if you like to have multiple projects on the That's what phone, I mean. <laughs> then I haven't really lost them just to the just to the web. Yes. 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 <laughs> these are these are coming to the shop today at noon too. We have a Latvian Christmas sock set. Which can you imagine? I know. Let's have so a look excited. inside. Very nice. So these are so brand new. There are three patterns. Oh, let's have a look. So, okay, so they're all Latvian designs. Mm -hmm. And I think Latvia. that these are brand new this year. I think this is the first year yes. they've done these. So very, very fun. And a little, oh yeah, you're still probably going to be knitting with three colors. In, uh, um, yes, but not all the patterns. One of these designs only has this two is two. Colors. This is just two. So this, yeah. this one is just regular stranded knitting technique. What number is this? Does it stay? That one is number, number five. five. Yep. And is it the same yarn as is used for the I believe mittens? so. I do too. Um, so, and they each come with a pattern and a chart. So these are not going to knit up gigantic. These are actually... Yeah, these are not wear. stockings. These are socks. Yes. So, so you'd be able to wear them. Yeah, I don't want to open that. They come in a cute little... Um, package with everything that you need. Yeah, really nice for gifting. Mm -hmm. You're the knitter in your life too. Yes. So yeah, we've got these. These are lovely. We have a limited number of these, so they'll go in the shop on Friday at noon. They are really pretty. Says a special thank you to Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer for the inspiration needed to create this collection. Christmas, it's coming. Yes. Very nice. And these actually come to us direct from Latvia. Thank mm -hmm. you for working with us, Hobby Wool. Mm -hmm. And um, and we have more of the... We have more mittens on the way. They're yes. not here yet. They're not here And yet. there will be some new designs mm -hmm. in there. Which yes. is why they're not here yet. Yes. Yeah. 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 Very nice. Yeah. These, these will go well, I think. I think so. Uh, we should mention that, you know, some people have found the pattern a little sparse. Let's say the explanations on how to do things. So we are working up an insert or a blog post or both that you will get when you purchase your kits. Not yet, because we're not finished it yet. But what the goal of that is to give you the, the fill in the blanks that you might have um, as a new color work knitter or as a just a new knitter. Um, yeah. Because I think it does expect you to have some knowledge. Um, so we're working on filling in those gaps, but um, we'll make that available to everyone who's ever purchased any of the kits uh, as yeah. soon as it's ready. Yeah, um, and so, well, that will be for the mitten kits. I don't yeah. know that we'll have that done we'll in have, time for the you're sock right. kit. I've not yet looked at the pattern. But I think the same instructions will help with both. You yeah. know, it's fairly uh, general stuff, you know. Um, yeah, so I think I'll be okay. Uh, but yeah, we're here to answer your questions as well. We love to help with that. And if you have any questions in particular. And um, when we first launched the mittens, we did a Zoom call mm -hmm. with people who bought them. We could yeah. do that again too. 
because I think that was helpful, just sort yeah, of explaining was... in real time some mm -hmm. stuff. It's, I don't want to make it out that it's harder than it actually is. No, I find, because um, I've been knitting mine, it's been sitting for a little bit. I mean, to pick, pick it back up. But yeah. the, the instructions are just a little bit short and pithy. So if yeah. you're used to, like, extremely detailed instructions, right? Um, that is not these. These do assume you have a certain sort of basis or foundation of either mitten knitting or sock knitting. Yeah. Um, I think, though, it helps you in your growth as a knitter to not have everything handed out. Yeah. Um, it does make you think a little bit, um, potentially, which which is uncomfortable and scary. But, you, you know, if you try and think it through and you're like, okay, I think this is what I mean I'm going to do it, you chances are you're right because you're a knitter. You'll get it. Yeah. Um, or... If you need more help, we're here to help. So, yeah. you know, don't be afraid. Yeah, you can always email us if you get stuck. Um, I know Kelsey has helped a number of people um, yeah. as they work through their projects. Yeah, and it's Kelsey that's writing the piece that will go inside. So, yeah, um, yeah it's lovely. So mm -hmm. we're very excited to have those and to be working with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we sh I do want to mention um, Jameson and Smith's Five Fly Gansey yarn oh. is on its way. Yes. I'm very excited to see this one. It looks yeah. like it's really beautiful. Yeah. So this is a Five ply Gansey yarn. So it's going to be a tighter twist. It's worsted spun. Mm -hmm. uh, good for fisherman sweater type uh, yeah. knitting, although good for all kinds of knitting, I'm sure, as yeah. well. Yeah. Ella, if you just want a sample of it, Ella has um, a mitts, fingerless mitts pattern. I think she said it was her first textured pattern ever. Her <laughs> first non-color work pattern. That's amazing. Which is pretty amazing. So that's Ella Gordon. Yeah. Um, you can find her on Instagram and look at that. She works at Jameson and Smith. Yeah. Yeah. And so there are some new patterns coming for this, but this the, the five ply will be appropriate for any um, sport weight, yeah, Gansey, right, um, pattern or and non Gansey patterns. It's a sport weight nerd. Fifty gram balls, so mm -hmm. very, um, you know, it's a nice comparison to say the French panty, which mm -hmm. is on cones, and you really commit to that, which you do. I love that. Some of you even have to buy two cones with the yeah. balls. You'll be able to do it by the ball uh, with Jameson and Smith. So yes, as soon as that arrives, we'll be getting that in the shop. I think. Yeah, the colors look just gorgeous as well so very excited about that yeah so if you if you want to receive an email when it's here just get on our email list yeah and we will send we will you definitely let you know yeah for sure yeah, we're excited yes. for this one yes um and then we have a new kit um in the shop right now we can put a photo here um it is yes. a new design from the petite knitter we turn yes. um it is called the apothecary sweater and it uses and it's mansion loopy yes um i believe she used these colors in her her design Oh, okay. do you know what colors they are? What numbers or? I was just trying to remember. We'll put it on the screen. Yeah. Thank you, Erica. Erica's the best. Erica is the best. Um, and then um, I just brought other colors of the Manchalo because we haven't talked about it in a little while. So this is from Wool Dreamers <coughs> and it's an unspun yarn. Um, so very similar to Plutolopi in that it's unspun, but different feel altogether yeah because it's it's plotolope is made with icelandic wool and the manchalope is made with um wool from the manchega yeah. sheep which is just very different it's very bouncy yeah you can see there's just sort of like a good stretch to the yarn it comes off the plate in two whereas i think plotolope is just, it's a, just single. a single yeah and it does it just feels very different it does very beautiful colors Ooh, that magenta. I love that purple. It's orange. I'm really liking that bricky orange. Yes, you are. <laughs> and this is a sort of, it's showing up as blue maybe, but I think it's more it's I actually purple. think that that is their light blue, and you can see little flecks of purple in there. Yeah, it's I, like a lavender. I think it's called light blue. Mm. Um, and then I think this one they call black, because for a sheep, this would yeah. be a black sheep. But it's a very chocolatey brown. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, and then they're really creamy. The cream. cream. Yeah, so we love Wool Dreamers here. They're doing wonderful things. Yeah, I was fortunate to be able to attend. Um, they did for vendors. They did a, a, a live where Ramon, um, the founder of Wool Dreamers, showed us around, virtually showed us around the, the mill. And it is not only an amazing process, but his passion for what he's doing is absolutely contagious. Um, so yeah, we're hoping to be able to get him on the shop cast yes. and share him with you. Um, yes. because really their mission is fantastic. It made me want to cast on with all the wool dreamers. <laughs> um, and I've knit, I've knit with quite a few wool dreamers yarns at this yeah. point and they're all lovely, which Jilly was home this weekend and she was wearing her sweater. I failed to get a photo. Ugh. Um, but she was wearing it. It was funny. We were out too and she had her coat on and her sweater and she's like, I'm boiling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud. I'm like, look at you, you're warm. <laughs> 
Um, so she said they, they keep the dorm almost at like 80 degrees. Like they, she said the students are all opening windows and I'm like, I can't even. No, that's ridiculous. Um, but Ugh. so she doesn't get to wear it much at school, Aww. but she did have it with her and she wore it like almost all day. And that's lovely. And she loved lovely. it. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, so brilliant. I still failed at getting a photo. I'll have to ask her roommates really good at taking photos. Yeah. I'll tell Jilly to. Um, yeah. Of course, Jillian was like, where are you going to put the photo? So I'm like, I'll put it on my Ravelry page. So you're all gonna have to go look at the Ravelry oh, page. Gonna, you're you're see, either, that, put it. either that, or I have to chop off her head on the photo. That's let's chop off her head. We'll put it right there. Yeah. So I'll see if I can get it. We can chop off her head. Um, but we don't need to chop off her head. We could just send everyone. Well, to Ravelry I mean, to, to, for you know, if that's yeah. that's what she wants, her it's not her face all yeah. over the internet. It's fine. That's that is totally totally fine. Yes, I'm happy to oblige her. Yes. Well, good. I'm glad she liked it, though, and that she felt the warmth of it. Yeah. 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 Boy, because that was knitted in Mota. That was knitted in um, Wool Dreamers Mota. Um, and, yeah, it was it was wonderful to work with. I still have a few balls left. Because yeah. it, 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 you get a lot of yardage. And even though I had calculated how many yards I needed, I still had two extra balls. Huh. So Funny. I don't quite know how that worked out. Did you knit it at a tighter gauge than you meant? No. Huh. No, I, I got gauge. I've been really good at making sure I had yeah. gauge. Yeah. Well, they're just generous then. I guess. Mm. I guess. Yeah. I yeah. Um, so. Holiday gift guide? Holiday gift guide. Put a little picture there. So <coughs> we, uh, we have curated some lovely gifts for either you to be gifted or for you to gift to another who is a knitter. So do check that out. Um, we're trying to help um, non-knitters navigate the shop for their loved knitting ones which is yeah. great another thing i wanted to mention and i'll do it right now is the membership the paid oh, yeah. the paid membership which we're planning on bringing in in the new year at some point in january um and right now we're just um gathering whether there's any interest in that so um over black friday i put it in the emails uh with a sign up form so we'll put we'll actually link below the sign up if you and it's a sign up for a wait list. You're not committing to anything at all. You're just letting us know that you would be interested in knowing more um, when it when it when it comes around. But this paid membership um, would be I'm not going to spill any beans right now because we're working on it. But um, I think it will be fabulous and I think you'll enjoy it. So if at all interested, go down below and click the link and just put your name on the list as someone who's interested. Um, and you'll be on the wait list and we'll contact you as things start to roll out with that. But that's that's a new thing coming in the new year that I'm excited about. Um, and what else, Maggie, do we well, have? Well, we have one more winner. Oh, yes. And then we'll go to and Rachel. And then we'll go to Rachel. All yeah. right. Sounds good. So. All right. So our second winner today is at Nancy Johnson 6211. And Nancy says, thanks for the hint on how to make the leg of the sock more roomy by going up a needle size. I will use that info in the future. Loved seeing all the beautiful yarn and the walk at the end was a great reminder yeah. to get into the outdoors. Yes. Thanks for a great podcast. Thank you, Nancy. Um, so, Nancy, if you can email us at info with the woolly thistle, um, put prize winner in all caps, we will get you your gift card. Yes. <laughs> Weren't sure there. Gift card. Yeah. And actually, I saw this note, which I think uh, is easy to, <laughs> easy to miss. <laughs> um, we wanted to show you some Tuku fingering. Yes, um, but before, be, right, so before we do that, just if you want to be in the running for a gift card next time, leave us a comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. That's always nice. Yeah. All right, so we want to talk about Tuku a little bit. Yeah, because we, we finally got it back in the shop. They they had a big oh change in their production. Yes, this Ooh, bowl is giant. It's like a tree trunk. It is a really big bowl. Yeah. Um and um we hadn't talked about these we talked about these coming um and we just hadn't shown them yeah and i think that they are amazing they are so pretty um, so of I course think... we're talking about tuku wool right and we're talking about tuku fingering and, and tuku fingering isn't new they've had tuku fingering yarn for years um but they recently um switched it up and the yarn now comes in 100 gram skeins yeah um, and it is just absolutely lovely. It comes in so many colors. Um, really generous yardage. Yeah, really lovely. 100% finished wool, uh, 370 meters, whatever that is in yards. Did you just say 404 yards? Yes. And made in Finland. Uh, we import it from them direct mm -hmm. and it's gorgeous. And they have some of the best colors and yeah. they do a lot of heathering as well. So shall we just um, go through the colors? Yeah, I okay. think so. 
Um, all right, so I've got H24 Leto, which is just too good. Oh my gosh. This one's H27, which is teeny. H32 Nilla. Probably saying that wrong, but there you I go. I know. Some of the, the names are unfinished. Yeah. So. Um, O4, which is Ray. I love this color. Yeah, it's a nice deep medium colored. deep gray. Uh, H20 Hoka, which is a very Nordic red. Gorgeous. O7, which is Mantu. Um, a lovely medium light gray is O2 Humu or Humu or Hum. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, eight, which is Runo. I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a little pink. Um, age 26, Keijo. Nice blue. 39, which is Mana. I just kind of want to show all these naturals together yeah. because it's always interesting to see how they... Um, I think that the oh, 39 Mana might actually be a dyed color. Yeah. Um, but I think it's helpful to see them next to each other. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So, oh, really and then... Really pretty, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Very n colorful, natural, shaded uh, mm -hmm. yoke sweater or something. Yes. This is 01 Saki. Uh, 41 Lungo, another a nice deep dyed brown. Ori, 03, medium gray. 23 Upo. I'm probably saying that wrong. Fun color. Uh, this is H28, which is um, Ujo. The sticker that color looks so you. I know, it is so me. I love this color. Um, 20, which is Lemu. Oh. It's a beautiful red. I love that hot pink. 43, <laughs> hot pink in English. I know. It's so bright. It is so bright. It would make an amazing contrast color. Oh, what a like, pop. If you yeah. had like a gray with that pinky pop. Yep. Oh my goodness. What fun. Hot pop. Mm-hmm. I think we did this um, one too. This one, we did do that yeah. one. Uh, 36, Yurdi. Yurdi, Yurdi. lovely green. 42, Aubergine, which might be oh, Aubergine and finish. Yeah. I don't know. 33, Berta. I'm running out of space. Um... H23, Celia. That's pretty. This is, this is, yeah, this has been around a good mm -hmm. long while. It's a very popular. 38, Gorilla. Sissy, Sissy. It's a dyed black. Beautiful. H21, Repo, which means fox, I know. Just a gorgeous oh. color. I'm all out, so. Oh, we got these three. Okay. Um, H36, Roto, <clears throat> which is a lovely sage. Heathered green. 28, which is Tate. Really pretty rosy pink. Yeah. Uh, this one's always been really popular too. Mm -hmm. It's H31 Ava, and it's this lovely heathered blue. And last but not least, 40, which is Syringa. So is um, that the entire collection? I believe that these are all the colors. So unless I missed one, but I think that these are all the colors. If you haven't knit with Tuku yet, what are you waiting for? This is gorgeous woolly wool yarn. Yeah. Um, we have a beautiful kit for the Saski sweater, which is from the Petite Knitter. Mm -hmm. um, and it uses the Tuku fingering. Yeah. She's got her little bunny. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Saski so cute. The, so cute. Yeah. So yes, yeah, very happy to that this has now gone up to 100 gram skeins. Yeah used to be 50s and used to have to buy a ton of it yeah yeah so this is great oh, I'm dropping wool everywhere yeah okay all right I think that that's it is that it is that everything okay well then I think uh we have to go to Rachel mm -hmm. um Rachel I think uh lost her power uh, so we'll see what it's like there with that gale force winds going on. Yeah. Um, so enjoy that. Um, and in the meantime, I think all that's left to say is uh, if you go out, take your knitting. Bye. Hi, Willie Thistlers. It's Rachel from Barkland Croft here in Fair Isle. Well, as I'm recording this, we currently have no power on the aisle. Uh, so we're without electricity. Luckily, I have a gas cooker, so I was able to make myself a, a coffee this morning and uh, light some candles, so it wasn't all bad. 
We've had gales here for the past couple of days with the winds around about 65 miles an hour, which isn't unusual at all for this time of year for here. Um, but it does make things such as feeding the sheep a whole lot more difficult, as you'll see from the next couple of clips. Last month's travels to visit my family already seem a distant memory, but one thing I did just want to share with you is this gorgeous cardigan that my sister crocheted for me. I had no idea that she was making anything for me and it fits me absolutely perfectly and I just love it. So huge, huge thanks to my sister um, for, for making that for me. It's, it's lovely to wear. With the price of vegetables here on the aisle obscenely high, I brought a big hold all full of vegetables back with me from my holiday. So I've been spending the last few weeks in the evenings making up loads of things for the freezer to see me through the winter and springtime. The only downside to working with red cabbage and beetroot though is these colour hands. Thank you to everyone that has supported me and the sheep by adopting a sheep from me, virtually of course. Um, just to let you all know that all of the locks of fleeces from your sheep have been mailed out to you. Um, the last of these were sent out at the beginning of November um, and I believe they are taking a few weeks to reach North America. Um, but hopefully you should receive those soon. Um, if you haven't received yours, please do feel free to drop me uh, a message, an email, and I can check when yours was posted for you. The start of November brought some wet and windy weather to the aisle, but for those of us that have sheep on a shared area of grazing, we still needed to do some maintenance work, putting up extra fencing to build a new race and crew so that we could car the sheep in. In bad weather conditions, the stone ruins in my fields really are a godsend as they provide really good shelter for the sheep. The following day could not have been more of a contrast. The temperature felt like it was May or June, people were wearing t-shirts. It really was incredible to think that this was early November. Walking down to the pier to meet the boat, you go past the new bird observatory, which as you can see, is really coming on a pace now. With our island ferry, the Good Shepherd, away on refit for a few weeks, we had the Snolder come in as a replacement. Because it's a much bigger boat, it was able to bring in all of the silage bales from Shetlands that I'd purchased in at once, which was fantastic. And it's simply down to the generosity of people such as yourselves who have supported me on Patreon and also by adopting sheep that I've been able to buy in all of this winter feed for my sheep, so thank you. I was able to buy in 140 bales and that should feed the sheep for between about 9 and 10 weeks. We commemorated Remembrance Sunday at chapel, followed by a visit down to the kirkyard where we lay a wreath at the war memorial. 
With it being a relatively mild and dry day, it was a good opportunity once back home to get the sheep in. So what I've been doing here is I've got the sheep into the field there with Meg, who you can just see. And uh, those are the ones I've already had in and had a look at. And I've been getting them in a batch at a time. There's Curly Whirly saying hello and treating any ones that have been limping, just checking their feet, um, making sure they're all in reasonable condition and then separating out um, three that of my sort of really old girls, there's Lorenzo, that uh, I want to bring over for the winter so that they can have more shelter and I'm able to uh, give them a few more extra rations each day. With it getting dark so early now, I really was working until the last bit of daylight left the sky. So this was about 4.30 in the afternoon and I think this was just about as I was going to bring the last sheep over the road um, into the garden. So it was pretty dark by that point. <laughs> So Sandy is one of the girls that I've brought over. Um, she's this one just here at the back in with Rainbow Bright. And I've brought her over into sort of the, the garden space and buyer um, because she has lost her sight. Uh, I don't know if it's a total loss, um, but certainly she's had a significant loss of sight. It might just be age related. She's one of my very old girls. Um, but I didn't want to sort of leave her for the winter in the main field. Um, obviously with it being completely dark, I didn't want to just bring her out into the garden where she doesn't know kind of her pathway, she doesn't know where things are. So I've put her in a stall with Rainbow Bright for the night. They've got some sheep nuts, tub of water, some hay, and a nice straw bed for the night. And then we'll get her outside in the morning. So here we are, this is Sandy outside and uh, Minnie Milk has decided that he wants her to be his girlfriend. I'm not sure how Sandy feels about that. Uh, you can just see off to the right there's Baba and Brownie who are two of my really ancient girls that I also brought over for the winter. Uh, this just means that they've got access to the buyer sort of warm straw beds for shelter whenever they want it um, and they can get extra feed rations each day. Um, so uh, it'll take a little while for them to settle down but they'll be fine and uh, hopefully mini milk will calm down. With the temperatures starting to drop now and uh, the grass really becoming thin on the ground, um, I've started feeding uh, all of the, the sheep now. So this is the, the yows field, mainly yows, but a few of the, uh, the weathers as well. That's the, the castrated boys. So they seem pretty happy. We've also had some incredibly beautiful sunrises and starts to the morning. Unfortunately, they don't always last as nicely as they look, but uh, it's very nice to enjoy them for a while. And of course, there's always one who doesn't want to join the others for breakfast and thinks that uh, they should get their own personal breakfast buffet brought to them. And in this case, it's saucepan.
into the second half of November, we had about five days where the weather was just unbelievable for this time of year. Relatively calm, sunny, dry. It was great for getting laundry done and dried outside. I do have one bit of sad news to share with you. Um, some of you may remember Humpty. He's one of my special needs sheep. Um, he was born with a partial cleft palate. Um, so he always needed a bit of extra care and he was sort of very sneezy and snuffly so he had to have daily face and nose cleans but he was just the most gentle soul. Um, sadly whilst I was away on holiday with my family um, he passed away so it was sad that I wasn't able to say goodbye to him but sweet boy Humpty. But to end on a brighter note, I just wanted to wish all of you that celebrate it a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you had a wonderful day spent with friends and family and enjoying it. And here's a, an old photo from a few years ago of a very young Blossom with her Thanksgiving turkey friend. Bye for now and we'll see you next time. <laughs>